Pokemon is one of the biggest and most loved franchises in the world. But did you know it almost didn't finish production? Pokemon was known as Capsule Monsters, a very personal project for its creator, Satoshi Tajiri. You might think that Pokemon was developed by Nintendo, but the actual team that developed it was Game Freak. And Game Freak had massive problems that almost killed Pokemon before it started. Tajiri began development on what was then known as Capsule Monsters, with Miyamoto providing his professional expertise whenever necessary. However, despite all the enthusiasm that Tajiri had for his project, it appeared that Nintendo's initial skepticism was not unfounded. Capsule Monsters was still too much for the still green Game Freak. The company hit a financial low point during this time, losing several employees as Game Freak could not afford to pay them, and Tajiri himself worked for long periods of time without a salary. Development was off to a bad start, and it would not get easier anytime soon. Tajiri would spend long days and sleepless nights working as much as he could, but despite his best efforts, the project was put on hold indefinitely. In order to make ends meet, Game Freak shifted focus on developing for different companies rather than their main project. It was a desperate time, without funding and stability, Game Freak would not survive. It proved to be the correct choice. Eventually, Game Freak managed to claw its way back into stability, behind schedule, but ready to pick up capsule monsters once again, with the hope that it would be easier the second time around. But the further Tajiri's concept developed, the more issues they ran into. For one, the name Capsule Monsters was inspired by Gachapon, a popular type of toy machine in Japan. That made it difficult to trademark the name, so Tajiri experimented with Kapumon before landing on the name Pocket Monsters. Pokemon's development had a hardware problem as well. Game Freak's Unix computers were old and troublesome, often crashing and slowing down progress. During the fourth year of development, a particularly bad crash almost doomed the entire development once and for all. The computer which contained the most code for the entire game all but broke down, making the data irrecoverable. It was a moment of panic for the team. If they could not recover that data, the entire game would be done for. Four years of work, data on every Pokemon already made, and the main character could not be simply replaced. It took an extensive search for help, scrutiny of manuals in different languages, and numerous anxiety-riddled attempts, but eventually the code was able to be retrieved. Time was also not on their side. Pocket Monsters took six long years to be developed for the Game Boy console, a device that was already well into its life cycle. As the months stretched on, the Game Freak employees would be bombarded with questions about how well the game would sell for an old console, and the fear that the game would be dead on release loomed over the development team. Everything seemed to conspire for the project to be abandoned once and for all. And yet, it wasn't. Instead, it was growing into something special. Pocket Monsters was evolving. Concepts and ideas for Pocket Monsters changed a lot during its six years of development. When development was just starting, Tajiri envisioned his creation to be completely different than what it would become. Pocket Monsters was initially imagined as a more traditional RPG, a genre that was growing more popular in Japan thanks to the Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest series. The workings of battling and collecting also changed many times during development. Although we take things such as Pokeballs for granted as an integral part of the franchise, Tajiri had initially wanted to implement a Charisma mechanic that would determine whether the monster would join the player's team instead. One of the most enduring ideas was the trading aspect. Kept intact from the very beginning as Game Freak believed it to be an enticing feature in the game. Tajiri had hoped that the idea of trading would encourage the series to grow in popularity due to word of mouth. He wanted kids to trade Pokemon on the school bus, on the playground, or after school, to think about them as much as he thought about the critters he collected as a kid. Tajiri wanted to put all of his childhood feelings into the game and pass them forward. Shigeru Miyamoto realized that this was essential to the series' success, and offered advice to Tajiri that they should split the game into two different versions, with some Pokemon being exclusive to a specific version. I didn't suggest splitting the games because it would allow us to sell more copies of the same thing. I just thought it would be more fun for the players if, say, there were three siblings and they all owned something unique. That way, they'd be able to communicate. I didn't want to release separate versions of the game just to increase the marketability. Shigeru Miyamoto 
As for the titular pocket monsters themselves, Tajiri and Sugimori refused to let hardware limit their creativity. Together, they designed more than 200 monsters and attempted to implement every single one of them into the game. Their plan was to create as many as they wanted to, then cut out just enough so that they could fit it onto the Game Boy cartridges. It was a bold play, but it paid off. The final number of creatures they managed to fit into the Game Boy cartridge? 150. And so it came to head. Troubled development, refining of ideas, sleepless nights and long hours of coding, drawing, testing, thinking, all for that one moment. The project started in the early 1990s, and after six long and grueling years of development, Pocket Monsters Red and Pocket Monsters Green were released in Japan on February 27th, 1996. Thank you so much for watching. This was Switchaboo's take on the history of Pokemon series creator Satoshi Tajiri, and if you want to check out more videos about the game industry and famous personalities, feel free to subscribe, comment, and leave us a like.